Hello everyone and welcome back! In the introduction section of this course, we discussed how one of the main features of Angular is that it gives us the ability of creating our own custom elements. So let's do that in this lesson, we are going to be creating our very first Angular custom component. The component is going to be a course card similar to this one can see here that the course card is visible and that's because we have added here some HTML in our application component template. Now imagine that our application has several places where we would like to display course cards. So we don't want to repeat this HTML everywhere on the application. Also the data that we are displaying here in this course card might be dynamic. We might have multiple cards such as for example a list of courses displayed and we want to pass to each card the data that we are retrieving from the backend instead of hard coding everything on the front end. So let's see how a component is going to help us to implement those use cases. In order to create a new component, let's head over here to the command line, stop our server, and what we are about to do here is we are going to use the Angular CLI to scaffold a new component. For that we are going to run the following command, ng generate component and then we need to give here a name for a component. So we are going to call this the course-card component. After running this command we see here that the Angular CLI has generated here a few different files. We have here a TypeScript file for the component, we have here an HTML template, some CSS and we also have here a test specification. Let's have a look at these files. They are here inside the source folder, inside the app directory and we have here the new course card folder containing all these files. Let's now have a look at each of these files separately. Let's start with the course card component. So as you can see this file contains a TypeScript class called course card component. We can see that this corresponds to an Angular component which represents a custom element because of the presence of the add component decorator. Inside the decorator configuration we have here a series of properties. The first is the selector property that defines what is the HTML tag that this component belongs to. Going back here to our application component, the selector means that we are going to replace this course card HTML here by a new custom HTML element called course-card. So the name of this custom HTML tag is the same as the selector string that we have here. The next thing that we have here in our component configuration is the template URL, which points to the location in the file system of a template file. If we open it up we can see that this is essentially empty at the moment but the idea is that this file is going to contain the HTML that we are going to see on the screen that corresponds here to a course card. So as you can see that is going to correspond here to this course card HTML that we have here. So let's go ahead and remove it here from the home page and let's move it here inside the course card HTML. So now we have copied here this static HTML and notice that we are applying here some styles. We will see later in the course how to make these styles specific only to this component. Right now what we are going to do is we are going to run our application using this new Angular component that we have created here with a set of empty styles for the moment. Let's go to the command line and let's run npm start. After a moment our server is now up and running so if we now reload the application we can see that we get the exact same result that we had before. But now we have extracted the HTML that we had here and we have moved it inside a custom HTML tag course card that we have created ourselves. This means that if we create here two or three extra HTML tags in our template and we refresh the application, we are going to see that we have here three instances of the course card component, as expected. As we can see, using Angular we managed to create in only a couple of minutes a new HTML element that we can use to build our application. If this application would have multiple screens where we have to show 
course cards, such as, for example, an All Courses page or a Courses in Promotion page, we could use this component instead of copying all this HTML everywhere where we need it. But notice that the strings that we have here with the description and also the image are hard-coded. So we want to avoid that, we want to make this content configurable. We want to receive this content here as an input for the component, the same way that for standard HTML tags we have configuration properties such as for example here the class property, the source property, etc. Let's then see how can we add configuration properties to our custom HTML element. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to talk about component inputs. So as we have seen in the last lesson, we now have here three instances of the course card component. All this text here is the same and the image is also the same. We would like to give to each course card a different title and image. And let's see where we could get the data for that. If you open here our Angular course root repository and then open here the source folder you're going to see that there is a TypeScript file here called dbdata.ts. If we click on it, we're going to see that it contains here a series of courses. So each of these JavaScript objects that we see here corresponds to a given course. Let's see how can we use this to print to the screen one course card for each of the elements that we have here. The first thing that we have to do is to make the data available to the template. The template consumes data that is available here at the level of the component as a member variable. So let's say that we're going to define here a variable called courses that is going to contain a few of the courses here available in this array. Let's say that we want to take here the courses number one, number two and number three. We can make this data available at the level of the application component so that we can add it to the screen by adding member variables here at the level of this component. Let's say that we want to make available the data for this course, then we define here a variable called core course and we assign it the first element of the courses array. We can do the same for a couple of other courses. Let's define here, for example, one for RxJS and the other for NGRx. So here we have three member variables defined. Any of these member variables are available for being used here at the level of the template. Let's try this out. We are going to add here an age one tag and we're going to use here the Angular template interpolation syntax and we're going to try to access the description of the core course. If we now reload the application, we are going to see that indeed we are using here the title of the first course. If by some reason we would like to print instead the title of the second course, we just have to use the second variable that we have defined here. If we replace core course with RxJS course and reload our application, we are going to see that now we have the title of the second course here in our courses array. So as you can see, in order to be able to use some data in our template, we need to first assign it to a member variable at the level of a component. If we don't do that first, then the data will not be visible here at the level of the template. Now, instead of printing out here the description of the first course, what we would like to do is to pass the description as an input of the course card component. We would like to do something like this. We would like to define here a custom input property called title and inside it somehow we would like to pass in here the RxJS course description. As we have seen before, the Angular syntax for inputs is the square bracket syntax. So this says to Angular that the content here inside these double quotes is to be interpreted as a JavaScript expression that is going to be evaluated in the context of the application component. Now the question is how to add this input property title to the course card. We can do so by defining here a member variable which will be a string at the level of the course card component and we want to annotate it with the Angular Core input decorator. 
This way, Angular will know that this is an input property of the course card element. With this in place, we are now passing in here the description of the course. What we want to do now is to use the title here at the level of the course card component template. In order to do that, we do the same as we were doing here in our application component. We are going to use here the Angular double curly brace syntax for interpolating here an expression and we are going to access here the title property that is present here in the context of the course card component class. So let's try this out. If we now reload our application, we are going to see that for the first card that we have defined here in our list of cards, we still have here the RxJS in practice course description. Actually, I wanted to pass in here the core course description. So let's quickly fix that. We reload the application and we can see that we have here the correct title. The other two cards, however, are not displaying anything. And this is because the title property for these two other cards has not been defined. So this means that each of the course card components has its own data scope. There is an instance of the course card component for each of the courses. Here we have the title with this value, but here this value is not defined, so we have here an empty string. Let's now change here our template and pass in here the other course descriptions. We're going to add here in the second card the title of the RxJS course and here we're going to pass in the title of the NGRx course. And now by reloading here our cards we can see that we have the titles as expected. First the core deep dive, then RxJS and then NGRx. Now the next thing that we would like to do is to change the course image for each of the cards. So we would like to pass to the component this second property here, the icon URL. We would also like to change here the long description of the course so that it corresponds to the text that we have here. So one way of doing it would be to pass to this course card component two extra properties. We would go here to the course card component and we would add here a couple of new properties. We're going to do this in a different way. We are going to instead pass as an input to the course card component the complete course object in one go with all its properties. For that, we are going to be using here a type definition that we will find here in the model folder. If you open the course.ts file, you're going to see that we have here a very simple interface defined that defines a course type. This is a very practical way of defining custom JavaScript object types in a type safe way. As we will see, this is going to give us auto completion at the level of our component classes and even at the level of the template. Right now, we want to refactor our course card component to take as input. Instead of only the course title, we want to take as input a complete course object that we are going to import here from the model folder. Now moving to the template of our course card component, this variable here is no longer present in the course card component class. Instead, we have available the course object. So we can now access the title of the course by auto-completing here the property that we want. We have here all the properties available at the level of the template and we can now choose here course.description. The same way that we have printed here the description of the course, we can also access here the course image. So the source of this image is no longer going to be here an hard-coded value. Instead, we are going to pass it the value of the course image. We're going to again access the course object and we're going to see that in our autocomplete list we have available the icon URL property. In a very similar way, using an interpolation expression, we are going to be able to pass in here the long description of the course. Now, in order to view the free courses on the screen, all we have to do is go back here to our application component template and instead of filling in the title property, we are going to instead fill in the course property for each of the courses. For the first card, we want to pass in the core course. 
for the second the RxJS course and for the third the NGRX course. If we now try this out, we are going to see that our data is being correctly displayed as expected. As we can see, the input syntax with square brackets for passing input data to a custom component, it's exactly the same syntax that we use for defining a property of a standard HTML element, such as, for example, an image tag. The syntax is consistent in both cases. Next, what we are going to cover is component outputs how to generate custom events from our custom components. Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last lesson we learned how to pass input data to a custom component using the square brackets template syntax and the input annotation here at the level of the component class. In this lesson we are going to see how can we make a component such as the course card to emit custom events that can be handled here at the level of the parent component. Let's give an example of a custom event. We would like to go here to our course card component and we would like to add here a button. When this button is pushed, the user is going to view the course. So it's going to be redirected to a new page that is going to display the course that corresponds to the card. So if we hit Command S, we are going to see that now on each course card, we have here a new view course button. As we have seen before, we can add here to this button a click handler using the following syntax. We are going to add here between round braces, the browser event that we want to handle. And here on the right hand side, we need to provide an expression that is typically a function call. So I'm going to add here a new method on course viewed. And this method needs to be part of the course card component. So we're going to add here a new method that is going to be called in response to this click. In order to confirm that this click handler is working correctly, let's add here some logging and try this out. If we now open here the console in the Chrome DevTools, we are going to see that whenever we click here on the view course button, we are going to get here the logging statement as expected. So this will happen independently of the card that we click. Notice that the template syntax that we are using here for adding a click event handler, it's just another way of adding a standard standard browser event listener. This works as a standard browser event, which means that the click event will bubble to outside the component itself, to outside the course card. So this means that if we go here to our application component and we add here a click handler at level of the course card itself, by using the same syntax, we are going to see that this event handler is going to be triggered as expected. Let's try this out. We are going to add here a click handler called on card clicked and this function is going to exist here at the level of the application component to this event handler function we're going to be adding here a new logging statement so what is going to happen here is that when we click here on the view course button this event handler here at the level of the course card component is going to get triggered this logging statement is going to be issued to the console and then the browser click event is going to bubble up is going to be caught here at the level of this click handler and then this function is going to get triggered let's try this out let's open the console and see what happens whenever we click on view course so as you can see we have here the click handler that was triggered at the level of the card component followed by the click handler at the level of the application component Using the same syntax that we have used to handle here a normal browser event, such as a click event, we can also handle custom events. Let's say that instead of responding here to the click event that gets bubbled up from the view course button, we would like to respond here to a course selected custom event. So this is not a standard browser event. Let's rename here our function in order to reflect the fact that this is a custom browser event. This is going to be called the on course selected method. Let's then go back to our application component and rename the event handling method. 
at the level of our course card component. What we want to do now is to emit the custom event. In order to do that, we're going to need here a custom event emitter. So let's instantiate it using the event emitter class from Angular Core. To our event emitter, we can pass an optional type parameter that is going to define what type of values are getting emitted. In this case, we want to emit an instance of course. So we can use this course selected emitter to emit here a custom value. And here we can pass in the value of the course that got selected. We can access this using this.course. With this new implementation, whenever we click here on the view course button, we are then going to be emitting here a custom event that is going to pass in the selected course as a payload and that will be caught here at the level of the parent component using this event handler. We can now retrieve the value that was emitted by the event emitter using the special dollar event variable. This means that here on the on course selected method, we can now add here a new parameter, which is the value that got emitted by the event emitter. In this case, the course. In order to confirm that we are indeed receiving here the course, let's log it out to the console. Now, if we would try this program as it is, we might be surprised to see that on course selected is not getting triggered. And this is because here in our course card component, we did not mark this event emitter as being an output of the component. So in order for our example to work, we need to add here the output decorator from Angular Core in order to mark this event emitter as an output of this component. If we don't add this here, then the example would not work. With this in place, let's now try out our example. As we can see, we have added here our custom event handler only at the first card of our list. Let's have a look at what we have then in the console. If we click here on the first card, course, we are going to see that we have here indeed the first logging statement done here at the level of the course card component. And we have here a second logging statement that was done at the level of the application component. So our event emitter triggered here a custom event that was caught here and on course selected was triggered and the course was indeed printed out to the console as expected. Now, if we click here on another course, let's say, for example, the last in the list, we are going to see that nothing happens other than we can see here the logging at the level of the course card component where the button click handler was triggered. But no custom event was received here at the level of the application component. And this is because we only added here an event handler to the first card of our list. So if we add here similar event handlers to the other cards, we are going to see that any card will be printed out to the console. Let's then try this out. If we try this new version of the program, we see here that the first card was printed out here to the screen. But if we now click here on the second and on the third courses, we are going to see that the correct data is being logged as expected. So as you can see, the template mechanism for handling custom events in Angular looks exactly the same as the one for handling native browser events. So handling here the native click button looks exactly the same as handling here a custom event. There is one important difference though, is that these type of events, they do not bubble up the component hierarchy. So the click event that was emitted here did bubble up from the course card component up until here our application component. This is just the standard browser mechanism. It's not Angular doing the bubbling of the event, but this custom event, unlike the native event, will not bubble up. Also notice that the name of our custom event is exactly the same as the name here of our event emitter. This is because Angular takes the name of the event from the name of the emitter if nothing else gets specified. Let's say that we would now rename this variable to course emitter. So if we would do so, 
then our example would no longer work because here in the template we are expecting an output event named course selector and there isn't here an emitter named like that. So if we want to define here at the level of the output decorator a different name for the custom event other than the name that we have here for the event emitter, we can use here this string parameter. So if we now specify here a value, then this is going to be the name of the custom event linked to this emitter. So if we now retry our application, we are going to see that everything is still working as expected. So if we head over here to the console and we hit here, for example, the second card of the list, we are going to see that our custom event is still being triggered. And with this, we have covered Angular component inputs and outputs.